Now it's time to repot this Yamadori field down. In an earlier video, I asked for your feedback on which pot to go for, and with your feedback, I think I prefer this pot, but I will keep this one ready because having a bit of extra depth might come in handy depending on the shape of the root ball and what we've got when we open it up. Cut the wires loose, nice and flush, he says. And there we have our root ball. It's a really exciting time repotting a bonsai tree for the first time, especially a Yamadori. But it's important to uh, not get carried away and just take it very slowly, go very carefully and explore that root system. Get to know what, what its features are and what challenges there are, where the main structural roots are or or what have you, it's important to just really just feel your way through it. The last thing I want to do is blast in here and damage a, an important structural root, etc. And that's especially one of the reasons why I like using a chopstick, especially for Yamadori root systems, is it's so forgiving on the roots. When you've got a hook or a rake, it's very easy to hack into the root system and get carried away and pull apart more than you'd originally intended or more than you would have liked to. With the chopstick, with a nice point, it, it parts the roots. And with the beveled edge, it pushes any soil out, leaving the roots intact. Whereas with a hook or a root rake, you're digging in and you run the risk of grabbing too much and yanking it free. A nice gentle chopstick is definitely my preferred tool of choice for repotting. I'd be really interested to know what you prefer to use for repotting. Are you more of a hook, rake or a chopstick user? So in this area, we've revealed a, a good amount of the structural root now. Around the back here, we've still got quite a deep we've got quite a deep nabari free zone. I'm curious what's going on down there to see if there's not some more structural roots further down. It's getting a little bit awkward there at the moment. So it might be that we stop exploring the surface roots now. Ah, no, we've just found something. Yeah, that's a root. That's a root. I think that's a root there. Now that I've done a more thorough job of revealing the base of the trunk and the root spread, or nebari, nothing has changed my mind from the original analysis. This is still the angle that I'd like to go for, and the front is still going to be somewhere around here. So I'll go ahead and do the repot. From here, we've got some nice structural roots. They're at slightly jaunty angles, but they're still giving the impression of a nice nabari. We've got a nice wide base. We also have this nice deadwood feature to add a bit of character and age to this view. And the apex is engaging with the viewer. Take this wire out, nice and flush. Establish a flat base. This is exactly how Ryan Neal teaches how to establish a new planting angle. I highly recommend signing up for Mirai Live service. This segment really just needs to be as shallow as we possibly can get it.
If I take off any more from here, I'll be digging into too much root. So let's, uh, let's stand the tree up and see where we're at. I'm happy with that at this repotting. It might be that we tweak it again at the next repotting. For this stage, I think we're good. To recap the technique that I've learned from Bonsai Marai, we found the angle we wanted. We then tipped the tree up, trying to keep our new angle perpendicular to the work surface, and then removed root and soil in that plane to try and establish a new flat base that would give us the desired planting angle. Make sure you check out Bonsai Marai for more techniques. It's highly worth the monthly subscription. And just to reiterate, I pay full price. I'm a fully paid up member. I receive no compensation for recommending it. I'm just simply that much of a fan. Okay, so now we've established the base of the root ball at the right angle. Let's just come in a bit and deal with some of this superfluous root that we've got up here. Okay, so this thick root doesn't seem to be important structurally and it's coming right up in the air. So let's come in and cut that back. We also don't need these pieces. So that one there is coming from down below. Let's leave that for the time being. Again, we've got a structural piece facing upwards. See so if we can't tease that root away. Figure out where this one's coming from. Just gently so cut that one back. And where's this coming from? Tease out some of the soil. Now we've made some space. Fairly sure that we don't need that, so we can cut that back. Here we've got a structural root going out and then back around here. Let's see if we can't figure out what it's attached to. Let's tease it out a bit more. That one's coming from over here, good. Let's very carefully pull some of that soil away until we can tell what what it's attached to in this. Okay, let's fold that one around there. Ah, okay, so that is coming from down here. Just down here. Coming under this bit. So this one goes all the way around here. Well, that's not ideal. This one's coming from down here and goes backwards. That's not ideal. And we've got some fine roots down here to cut back to. So let's start the process by removing this. So at the moment, this is up in the air, but we don't know where it's coming from. So we don't know how far we want to cut that bit back. What's going on along here? Good to know. Okay, so we've got a structural root that seems to be coming from the trunk here, coming down. There's this fine piece looping over it. Let's take that fine piece off so that it doesn't girdle. Okay, and this is forking nicely. That goes down there. Okay, let's cut this one there. I can't get rid of it just yet because it's still entangled but let's continue trying to make a bit more sense of this side. So this thicker piece is coming up. Now we don't know where it's going or where it's coming from but I do know that if I cut it there's still plenty of root to support the tree and it's girdling some uh, important roots. So let's come in and take that out of the way. And that's freed up this, root, this thicker structural section now. That's brilliant. Trim that annoying bit back a bit further as well. A big circling root here. 
Okay, this one out of the way. Good. It's quite a dense section of feeder roots here. Just gonna have to force my way through a little bit. Obviously with the chopstick, that's done very minimal damage. Let's just untangle these a little. See what's what. So this, at the new angle, this one's pointing almost directly up. So let's cut that one off. of longer roots there, cut those back and I think in terms of the plane of the root ball I think we're just about done. I've got a nice flattish root base. We're pretty much at the angle we wanted. Maybe we've lost it just a touch but when we tie it down into the pot Think it'll be better and, and we'll be able to at the, at the second repot we'll do an even better job of the angle right let's pick a pot then shall we first up we've got this green erin pot i like the depth of this one but i don't think it's wide enough actually Okay, and then we've got the wall saw. I like the glaze of this pot. I think the shape could maybe be a bit more masculine. But overall I think the look and feel of the pot works okay. Better than the green Erin I feel. I can't help but feel that the pot's just a bit too small actually. So what I think I'll do is I'll pot it into this one because the roots fit nicely. And we'll see how the year progresses. It might be that as I reduce the size of the apex a little it starts to look better. If I still feel that the next repotting that it's a bit small still, I'll play around with it then and I'll keep my eye out for other pots in the meantime. Edges, free up any of the uh, circling roots or the old black soil from the edges and then just prune the roots back a touch where I feel it's necessary. So we've got a nice, neat, cleanly cut root ball. We have quite a significant circling root there. Okay. Now with my shears, I'm just going to give some nice. That was on clean cut. Some nice clean cuts now with the shears. Any tears to the roots doesn't heal as well. So by giving it a nice clean cut, the roots are going to heal much better, there'll be less dieback. Callus should hopefully form to those cleanly cut ends. And new 
roots will develop nice and close in. Let's just check how we're doing with the pruning. In we go. Yep, that's looking good. For my tie down strategy, I'm gonna use two wires. One coming from here to here, and the second one coming from here to the same hole. So let's get those set up now. Come in with my aeration layer. Which is a slightly larger particle size than the main bulk of than the main bulk of my soil. Next I'm going to make a central cone and my central cone is going to be quite large for this tree. And the reason is because I'm going to plant it a bit higher than I might than you might normally would with a nice mound really build that cone up. Right, the tie down strategy is going to be a bit different for this tree. I need to get my wires over some structural pieces. And to make that easier, I've got some sticks to guide the way. And I'll, it'll enable me to push the wire through, hopefully following those guides. There's my first through. It's going to be properly awkward, but we'll get there. There you go, that's the second piece. Number three is in. Had to leave the most awkward one for last, didn't I? There we go. Okay, how are we looking? We're still central, yes. How's our angle? Okay, let's get the tree Settle down. I think we've lost a bit of the uh, forward lean and maybe a bit of the angle as well. But it's at a better angle than it was, so we might have to improve on it at the next repotting. For now though, I am happy with that. I'm not going to try and re-bed it down again. Now let's finish this repot, get all these roots sorted and then we'll be good to go. Unfortunately these tie down wires and this bit of this bit of rubber is going to be visible when we are done. With the roots as they are there's not a lot I can do to avoid that in terms of tie down strategy at this iteration so we're just going to have to uh, accept it. I think we're in a better position now using these structural roots instead of coming over the trunk as it was potted previously. We 
in terms of hiding the tie downs completely, I don't think we're, we're not going to get it at this iteration. Okay, how's that? That's nice and stable, so that's looking good. I'd much rather not have these on show, but as it stands, it's unavoidable. Pin down this root that really wants to fly away. Let's get that pinned down nicely. Just like so, with a small piece of wire. skyward straggly roots can just be pruned and now it's time to get some soil into these uh, void spaces around the perimeter of the root ball okay and then well Work the Yakadama in just to get the bulk of those big spaces filled. Get some soil work down into that hollow area there, look. Now that I've got the bulk of the gaps filled with soil and I come in with my much finer chopstick and really work the soil down in amongst the roots, fill in any voids underneath the root ball, just like there. It's got a big space there. Soil piled on top. Go on to the next void. Coming round, just giving it a final test. Feeling good. Now I'm just going to come in and prune away the straggliest of these stragglers.
So the final left, job left to do is to apply some top dressing moss, especially to some of these exposed roots. Not very flaky, it's coming out in bundles. <laughs> Some of it's still moist, it's all bundled up together. But that's okay, it's still going to do the job. Right, I'll take it outside, water it in and then we'll have a quick look. Alright, she's all watered in. Here comes the 360 degree turn. If you're not subscribed already, consider subscribing, smash the like button, and here comes the 360 degrees. I'll let this tree recover and in the late spring or in the summer, I'll do an update for you. Thanks for watching and take care.